What you are about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Top TV, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. Molo, Eita, how's it? San Bonani. I am Tim Mudise. This is Za News, and let's get it on. Za News has uncovered a cache of leaked videos of Julius Malema at his disciplinary hearing, reading the reasons why he should not face charges. We will never be charged because the ANC constitution was written before the youth was born. We deny bringing this party into disrepute because we have no knowledge where this repute is. I am unable to be present at your hearing because I have nothing suitable to wear. I'm glad I caught up with you here before the show. I just wanted to let you know that I'm not here to step on anybody's toes, you know. Just wanted to show you my support and appreciation for the great job that you're doing here on ZA News. You have some nerve showing up here after all this time. Excuse me? Do you have any idea how hard it has been for me? <laughs> I'm sorry? These people, they are crazy. Which people? Zuma, Zile, Malema, Gaga. They are driving me mad. And I have to go out there every day and try to make to sense of it all. I can't do it anymore. Yes, I remember now. You know, show business definitely can get a bit crazy. But you know what? We've just got to roll with it. We never ever bashed into any meeting. It is this wicked conniving comrade Gwedeman Tashi. He put a muffin basket and hot lentil soup by the door. We cannot attend any disciplinary hearing because my lawyers and me have booked a non-refundable holiday to Italy with Debra Pata. The youth made me do it. You must charge the youth. My guests today are Ash Communist Blayton Zimande and Super Capitalist Kanyimba Wu, and we'll be talking about the proposed national health insurance. But first... Sorry, Tim, is this not top billing? Oh my God, I'm totally in the wrong studio. Well, stay and chat, Kanye. You can't be less convincing than our politicians. But first... You've seen ER. Now get ready for NHI. Critics are calling it topical. Uh, I need a spy. Stat, has anyone got a spy? Arousing. Dr. Zuma, is that a stethoscope? in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? For the last time, I am not having a sex change. My voice is just naturally deep. Action-packed. His medication has worn off. Quick, Nurse Becky, give him three shots. Damn it, that's not what I meant. Do you know who I am? Oh dear, we've got an amnesia case. No, he is here for an emergency liposuction. Give me a number two blade. Number two. NHI. It's not just national health insurance. It's sick. Coming soon to an emergency room near you. There is no such word as disciplinary committee in the petty dictionary. Huh? Juliet. Juliet. Yes, go, go. The petty word for disciplinary committee is the Kotala Kalimo. Oh, okay. Thank you, Gogo. Ish. Minister Bladen Zimand. The word is Mr. Okay. Jeez, Tim, how dumb are you? Uh, no, I'm a minister. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Your Holiness. I didn't know. Forgive me, I have sinned a lot. Minister Zimand. KPMG has come out and said that the National Health Insurance Scheme could boost South Africa's GDP by making us all healthier and more productive. How is something that is such a massive drain on taxpayers going to make us all richer? Sorry, Tim, can I answer this one? Okay, so first of all, everyone will be able to have life-saving emergency cosmetic surgery. And like, we'll be importing like billions of breast implants so we can use the leftover ones to build like houses for poor people. They're totally waterproof, by the way. But Minister, 
Is it even possible for 5 million taxpayers to fund health care for 45 million? We don't know, Tim, but we are very eager to see what happens. It makes sense in theory that healthier people are more productive. But why aren't we uh, first trying to boost GDP by improving education or pegging back the unions when they get in the way of employing people? Sorry, Father, let me. First of all, Tim, school is for losers and fat people. And secondly, I don't know what unions are, so why don't you just shut up? I suppose the problem is that we all support the principle of the NHI, but we don't trust the government to administer it. Tim, in the Soviet Union, there was universal health care, and it was very fair. It didn't matter if you were in Moscow or the middle of Siberia. You could get equally bad treatment. So when you died at 45, you could die knowing that you had got the best care possible. Exactly. So shut up. What do you mean it's not easy being me? You're so squeaky clean, man. I mean, you never get caught driving drunk or into any substance abuse scandals or have affairs with celebrities or prostitutes. You know, I tell you what, it's hard, but that's how decent people behave. Well, I'm tired of it, man. Tired of it. I can't take it anymore. All this distance is killing me. Hey, hey, man. What the hell are you doing? It's too much pressure, man. That's it. I'm done. Screw this. No more voice of reason. In ASA News Explosive Exclusive, we bring you the latest on the arms deal secrets that President Zuma spokesperson whose wife signed a contract allegedly with with brokered by convicted froster who also took the couple to a trip to where they allegedly had their picture taken with Scrooge and Captain is trying from there Lawyers stopped the Mail and Guardian from publishing details of your beep with beep and beep. How do you respond to the allegations that the beep sent to your wife's beep on the Isle of Beep and then beep, 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 awarded the French company beep directly into your beep? I cannot confirm or deny anything because I don't know what you're saying. Well, uh, for a start, the Sunday Times reported that Shabir Sheikh was the beep used by Beep Beep as part of the consultancy agreement Beep while channeling Beep money to Beep. Your response? I'm sorry. I don't understand a word. Can you speak more clearly? Secret payments totaling Beep went from offshore bank accounts belonging to Beep just two months before Beep, credit card license tender worth Beep, Swiss bank account Beep, Thales Beep, Mendeley Investments Beep, Zarina Beep, Nkobi Holdings Beep, British Virgin Islands. Is that right? I have no idea. Why don't you spell it out in simple English? Because if I do, you will lay charges against me under the National Prosecuting Act and I will go to jail for 15 years. Good boy, Proclex. Now you are learning. Mr. My last question. Did you lie to the scorpions? I am not prepared to loosen my lips, even though your name is Brooklyn. Thank you, Mr. And best of lucky, all of us here at Designus think you are a beep who deserves beep. Beep, you too. You know, Tata, the ANC says we need a media tribunal. I mean, that word tribunal, oh my gosh, it makes me shiver, you know? It would be like the Inquisition all over again. Well, uh, sometimes the media can really get it wrong. And uh, they are not above the law, you know? Oh, I know that. Nobody's above the law. Journalists should check their facts first. And a time print. So, Tada, do you agree with uh, Zuma when he says they should be sent to jail if they go overboard? They do sometimes. But look, <laughs> even us, sometimes we go overboard. I mean, you and I, we get angry about this or that. We work ourselves up a bit too much and then, whoops, we go overboard. Well, uh, yes, maybe. In the heat of the moment. 
we can call, as you say, overboard. But uh, we are not the press. We are not on TV. We are just a couple of old guys enjoying our retirement. But uh, don't forget, we are also on this interweb. On what? On the big white interweb. You know, it's like uh, it's like Ubuntu. Oh. You know, uh, interweb, the interweb, the interweb, which means I'm online because you are online and we are all online together as one, you know? And we're on YouTube and MySpace, your space, his book, her book, Facebook, uh, you know, and and, and, and and then one day we say something and then, oops, the tribunal sees us and doosh, we get thrown into jail and uh, just for going overboard. There you go. You are blowing your cap again, Arch. I think you are going overboard on the bandwidth. On the what? The bandwidth. Which? Which? Okay. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back at me. Sadly, he isn't me. <laughs> but if he stopped using failure-scented political whitewashes and switched to old spin, he could smell as successful as me. What's this above my head? It's a shower head. Now it's gone. Look down. Look up. Where are you? You are in parliament with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's a free press. Look again. It's New Age reporting. Look again. The newspapers are now keys to houses for all my wives and kids. <laughs> Anything is possible when your man smells like old spin and not a failure. I'm on a horse. <laughs> An old nag, actually. You really need to get it together, Tim. You are going on air in a few minutes. This is all your fault. How is that? You left me here to fend for myself. When you were around, there were opinions. You gave your subjects the hardline. Now all we have reporters reading the accused. Well, there's one thing you need to understand. I cannot take responsibility for all of television. Oh, but you expect me to? Have you seen what these people are doing? Do you even watch the news anymore? Of course I do. Oh. About what? Pseudo-celebrities doing naked sushi parties, judges driving drunk, Juju living the high life in Mauritius, Lady Gaga saying she gets inspiration from her... Uh, her vag ah, I can't even say it, man. And the national broadcaster, those guys that keep f***ing up. It's crazy. And our president, giggling, always giggling, is so irritating. Wow, I didn't know it was so hard for you. I can't go on like this. President Jacob Zuma has once again been accused by critics of dodging issues in parliament by laughing instead of responding. Mr. President, your opponent said that uh, before you left for the United States, uh, you spent 15 minutes laughing as MPs tried to get you to respond to the public protector over the police headquarters list debacle. Are you dodging the issues? <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Mr. President, the country is crying out for leadership. Don't you think you should take a stand instead of laughing of criticism? Are you just going to laugh at everything I say? Tim, no. Just at the questions. I don't know. The answers too. For all the other questions, I will sound very wise. For example, ask me what I had for breakfast this morning, Tim. What did you have for breakfast, Mr. President? I had bacon and eggs, Tim. And what are you going to have for lunch? <laughs> So they haven't told you yet? <laughs> no. <clears throat> Mr. Che, 
chairman. This committee simply wants to know how the SABC have spent the billions given to it by taxpayers. So please tell us, what have you spent the money on? Uh, well, uh, there was the search. Uh, for generations. So that is 2,000 rand worth of cardboard. And uh, we had some mission statements printed and laminated. Uh, we bought seven English Africans dictionaries for the subtitles on Sieven de Lan. And uh, we bought lunch. Mr. Chair, what kind of a lunch costs a billion rand? Uh, a big lunch. <laughs> So the Boer, the Jew, the Irish man, and the Indian walk into a bar and the barman says, What is this? A f***ing joke? <laughs> a, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pettiless as the sun. Hey, wh what the f*** are you on about? It is something that uh, Yates wrote. Uh, he's my favorite, you know, Judge. Yes. Oh, f him. What does he know? I find it uh, comforting, you know, especially when I think of those who used to take issue with my quiet diplomacy and so on. He's a bastard white racist. Uh, well, uh, a lot of my critics are black, you know. There is that cleric archbishop uh, emeritus. Bastard coconut resist. And there is that singing and dancing Zulu, always smiling. F*** him. I say f*** him. Anybody who insults me, I say f*** you. Uh, bartender, uh, please uh, give me the bill. I think it's time to go now. Hey, hey, where's that f***? Barman. Hey, my bro, move your ass. Get us another bottle of this red. Hey, I would say to you, f you too, but I don't care about you. And anyway, I must go driving to a wall now. A Sangoma says unless the South African Football Association pays the 90,000 rand he claims is owed to him. He will make sure Bafana Bafana never win another match. <laughs> Safa, however, denies ever having used the services of Sbonello Madela. <laughs> Mr. Madela, what's going on here? Safa came to me last year. In a dream? No, in a PM Jabulu. They wanted to speak with the ancestors to help Bafana Bafana beat France in the Soccer World Cup. I did this. Yes, well done. We beat France 3-1. But we were still knocked out in the first round. What happened? Safa only asked me for help in a one game. Yeah, they didn't pay me, and that's what happened. So uh, basically, you are responsible for South Africa's dismal performance at the Soccer World Cup. Yes, I am. And Bafana Bafana will never win another game until Safa pays me. Makos, are you responsible for making the players behave like idiots uh, after their recent game against Sierra Leone? That was me. Makosi. No, 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 no. Just Bafana. I'm not working for the Makosi. And uh, for making Safa believe we had qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations? All my work. Makosi. Hey, I told you, I'm just working for Bafana, not Chiefs. So uh, you say that Safa owes you 90,000 rent? That seems a bit steep for a single game. Well, it's very expensive to, to, to speak to ancestors these days because it is, a, it is a long distance call. Do you need my help, Tim? Do you also have problem scoring? Yeah, for you, I will sacrifice this chicken. Only 10,000 rand. Chip, chip. Ah, Makosi. Thank you. I'll get my muti from the chemist. Hello, my people. Today I want to talk to you about a very special girl. Her name is Pila. She is just five years old and she is very lucky to be alive. Yes, Pila has been shot nine times by the poachers. Pila is a black rhino. Today, she is being looked after in a zoo in Johannesburg. Our thoughts are with her and we wish her a speedy recovery. You know, in our country, we have more than 90% of the world's rhinos. But the poachers are killing them so fast. 
that soon they will all be gone forever. Then the only place that we as South Africans will see a rhino will be on the 10 rent note. That will be a big shame. And why are they shooting the rhino? It is because the men in the Asian countries are believing that if they take the horn of the rhino and make a powder with it, it will give them magic powers in the bedroom. <laughs> yes, with their lady friends, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Imagine, they are believing that this part of the rhino will make the amshini very hard and strong. Such superstition, it is terrible. Everyone knows that the way to give the man the powerful tool for the job is to take the bangalala. It is a very special herb that we Zulus have been using for many, many centuries when the moon is full and our ancestors are wanting us to cover the women. Now, if we give the bangalala to these little Asian men, well, <laughs> maybe they won't be wanting to shoot poor Pila they will leave her in peace. Until next week, goodbye, my people. What is this world coming to? Today we're talking to Tim Modise, who seems to have gone off the rails, throwing all caution to the wind and putting up a finger to society. Tim, what exactly has happened to you, would you say? Tim, uh, I just got tired of everyone having a good time while I sat over there trying to maintain my sanity. I mean, those days are gone, Tim. From now on, my time will be to spend drinking with philandering politicians and then uh, driving with my new girlfriend, Charlize Theron. But Tim, are you sure that this will be a fulfilling life for you? Sure. I'm having a great time. Just look at me. I'm buddies with these guys. Yes, we are playing together nicely. And uh, I've got a hot cheek. What more could I want? Nothing, baby. I love you, lol. But you're giving up your passion. I don't care. I'm having the time of my life. Maybe when I'm done, you could get me a job at that company you work for. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Being a news anchor is a dirty job, but someone has got to do it. Mm. Mm. Good day, Tata. Ah, uh, hello, Tim. Good to see you. And uh, hello, Archbishop. Oh, hello. I brought you these shirts as a Christmas gift in case you are interested in joining the corporate world. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Tim. Wow, they are so gorgeous, my son. <laughs> Oh, you look sharp, Dada. Just like when you were a lawyer with Oliver Tambo. Maybe we should go over the latest figures for this quarter. <laughs> I like this corporate thing. <laughs> yeah, Dada. Maybe we should start a business together. Show all those kids out there how it is done. Tim, do you think we should start a business? Well, I don't know, Arch, but you know, business is tough these days. How hard could it be? Buy products, sell products, make profit. What products will we sell? Well, you're both very well-known and revered people, right? Why don't you get photographs of yourselves taken in these chairs and superimposed on various locations across the country, right? And then you can compile this into a book and sell it for a profit. That is very good idea. I think we could make a big profit. What would you do with the money, Tata? I think I would like a Ferrari 360 Moderna. <laughs> you need serve or the children's fund? Half, half. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing this? Because here we can, from me, Tim, the other Tim, and the team, it's goodbye. Hambagase and I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Let's do it once more. Jeez. Try and test. I would like to do that. I'm calling to you. Don't touch me on my studio. Don't touch me on my studio. Don't touch me on my studio. <laughs>